All right, so I started off with the air filter, did the shocks. I was going to stop there, but then my uh, my new valve cover came in. I was, uh, wasn't was planning on it for tomorrow, but once again, rockauto.com. You'd think with the amount of times I reference them, I'm paid, but I am an unpaid spokesperson and true fan of them. I've never ordered something and had it show up and not be the part that I wanted. It's truly the way to go and their prices are very competitive if not better than just about any other parts store but anyway aside from that the uh let me flip you around so here's my new one came with all brand new bolts brand new gasket the only thing it doesn't come with is the oil cover the where you'd engine add your engine oil we'll save that um so these throw together pos uh, Chevy Cruises. I mean, it's it's a great car. Don't get me wrong, but they definitely cheaped out on a lot of things. And the one major one that most of you owners have experienced, and the ones I haven't will, is this damn uh, the uh, oh shoot, mistake. I'm I'm mistaken here. I'm having a brain fart, but uh, uh, PCV valve is just garbage. Um, so in order to change that on a normal car or on any other car I've ever had any engine you can just pop that out put a new one in but with this one for some unknown reason other than to save money and cut corners you have to buy the entire valve cover they may have been thinking it was a good idea I don't know but, uh, you mechanics know how engineers are anyway so this is the channel that pulls your vacuum out, sends it over to the valve, you know, does its thing, but the diaphragm will get weak over time and you'll end up drawing a vacuum here out of this little hole, which that's all that is, is a telltale hole to tell if your diaphragm's gone bad. So mine's not leaking quite yet. If it is, it's very little, but it, the car has had a little bit of a rough idle. Um, I've checked the spark, changed the spark plugs, checked the, you know, the, the coil pack, which is right here. This is going to have to come off. Um, and it's still doing it, so I'm, I'm going to change this next because it's, it's due anyway. They're, if you're around 100,000 miles, just do yourself a favor and just change it. It's, it's a real common problem, almost like my uh, turbo video, if you guys have watched that. It's one of the things that should have been a recall or a design change done or something, but but anyway, we're gonna change it. This is uh, all I want to say is like fifty six dollars, and I have the new the torque pattern for putting the torque in all your bolts in the right sequence so you don't get any uh, warpage or make sure your seal's all good. I'll try to post that into the comments uh, shortly after I upload this video. Anyway, we're gonna get started. Um, we're going to pull this out first, just two bolts, pop this, uh, we'll do this right now, I can probably do this with the phone in my hand. This yellow clip, you pop that back, it's just a retainer. Get back all the way. Oh, well, I guess I'm not going to be able to do it with the phone in my hand. I'll grab some pliers and just, you just want to pop that whole clip right out. And then, then you can depress this, pull your uh, cannon plug apart. And then we're going to dive into pulling all, removing all these bolts. That's what I was telling you about. Uh, just a pair of needle noses, popped it out. The uh, cannon plug, I just, you know, get it, release the latch and then put a screwdriver in there and just, you know, give it a little pry to come off. Don't force it, you don't want to break it. Uh, I got the two bolts pulled out. It's a, let's see if I can find the size here. It's a T30, so a T30 Torx. Uh, the other ones are going to be female Torx. Let's see if I can find that size real quick. That size up. These are always hard to guesstimate. So it's a uh, E12, E12 female Torx socket. So I, I just got this little cheap set. I bought it at O'Reilly's or somewhere. 
Yeah, that's the one you want for those. Uh, this, once you got the bolts out, just kind of wiggle it. Again, you don't want to pry it. You don't want to damage your boots. So these are all your spark plug boots. These, like I said, I replaced a few of these. And actually, I think I found my skip problem. So let me grab a flashlight and I'll show you. I'm gonna replace that valve cover anyway, but. So let's go out here, light. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to show you, but I'll try. So you can see that spring right there is up above the, rip, the rubber. This one is caught just below it. And so is that one. The one that really caught my eye though is this one here. You can see all that green shit in there. So that's probably causing my misfires, just bad. You know, your spark plugs work on uh, electrical current and conductivity. So all that green shit in there is telling me it's not quite. Uh, yeah, so you know, all you gotta do to get them to line back up, like this one, you can see it's get the light in there. I'm sorry, guys. So it's caught here. So you should have been able to hear it. It just popped back out. So I'm wondering if uh, that, was, if that was part of the problem too. So always keep an eye out for stuff like that. When you're doing uh, doing work on vehicles, you know, you might, you might discover an additional problem on top of something you're routinely doing. Or, uh, yeah, see, that's that. That's that cylinder that has all that green shit in there. So I'll probably pull that plug out when I'm done. The wire will brush it off, throw some dielectric grease on it. Maybe it got, had some moisture in it the day that I changed it and didn't notice it. So that very well could have been the problem. But like I said, we're gonna change this anyways. Highly recommend you guys do around 100,000 miles. Uh, it's worth popping it off and just taking a look at everything underneath here, all your cams and timing chain, make sure everything looks good anyway. All right, so I got my old cap off, my dipstick out. I uh, took all the wiring harnesses and clips and stuff off the cover, got the bolts loosened up. And it's not gonna wanna come right off. So what you're gonna need to do is take a screwdriver and you're not really prying. You just wanna kinda wiggle. Cause this, this edge is thin and it's just aluminum and this is plastic so if, Granted, I'm changing this one, so if I bust a plastic corner or something, I'm not gonna worry about it. But if you're doing this just to inspect and you're not replacing it, you're gonna be really careful. So try to get, there's not really any good spots to get in there, especially holding the phone in your hand. But anyway, let me work at this for a minute. I'll be back with you. All right, took a little wiggling, but I got it. So here's your timing chain. Um, it is, the book will tell you to replace that at 80,000. Don't do it. It's a chain. It'll last most likely forever. Uh, however, if you got an older motor or some of the newer ones too that have a belt, you want to be changing it. Because if that breaks and you got what we call an interface motor, you're going to bend valves and you're going to have a, a nightmare over a, a simple repair job or a maintenance job. So. Don't replace the timing chain. I mean, I'm not a Chevy representative by any means, but it is just an expense that you don't need to do. That that chain is going to last forever. What you do want to do is check the tension of it. You know, you don't want too much play. That's that's about perfect. Um, this is what would be called a dual overhead cam, meaning the cams are above the valve instead of below, or above the valve springs instead of below, like some motors are. Just kind of take a look in there, make sure all the, you know, all your surfaces are nice. And there's nothing, no obvious flat spots or gouges or rust, anything like that. Uh, you can start the engine up and run it just like this. Make sure everything's all moving around. Uh, I'm gonna throw that new cover on. And you can see this is that channel that feeds that PCB valve. Um, and it's just full of crap. So I'm gonna see if I can loosen that up with some 
degreaser and some cleaner. Get it out of there with a shop vac and a hose. Wipe it out with a rag a little bit. Just so I'm not, you know, putting a bunch of crap right into my new one. So I'm going to clean that up. Set the new one on. I'll be back with you. Alright, that's on. Uh, I think it goes without saying, you know, if your engine's really dirty, wipe it off, blow it off with air compressor. You can use uh, water, just kind of keep in mind of where you're spraying it. You don't want a bunch of dirt and stuff falling down in there. Um, it's all on. Like I said, I got the torque pattern for, you know, uh, tighten everything down. Torque values I don't have. Uh, it's a rubber gasket, so pretty much just hand tight plus a, you know, just a feel good half turn. And uh, phone's telling me the battery's low. Talk too much, I guess. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'll post that. I'll try to be the first one to comment on this video. I'll put it in there. Um, I'm going to tackle that spark plug. If I find anything interesting, I'll load it up. But other than that, it's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to check that spark plug. Then the coil pack will go back on. I think when I'm all done and happy with it, I'm going to cut this off. And we'll see what that diaphragm and internals right, look like. So we're inside the truck, so I got... My phone's dying, so you're plugged in. But uh, so I told you if I found anything interesting, I'd be back. So that'll cause a misfire. So the I didn't really notice a so much a misfire as a rough idle, but this will also cause that. This is the spring. Let me unplug this. If it dies on me, I'll film it again. So what I did was uh, I pulled that spark plug out. I cleaned it, not with a wire brush. Don't use a wire brush. This is just a little nylon. It's almost like toothbrush material, just a little stiffer. That's not gonna hurt your electrode or anything. However, this, this is gonna need some wire and possibly a little emery cloth or a crocus cloth, whatever anybody wants to call it. Sandpaper, basically. Um, so I pulled the boot off of that number one cylinder, the one we found that green shit in. And you can see in there, it's just caked. So obviously this cylinder wasn't doing very much, if anything at all. I'm surprised it really didn't run worse than it did. So I'm gonna clean this all up, put it back in. And uh, like I said, it didn't, wasn't showing a problem, but then again, my, my wife drives it more than I do. So um, there was a check engine light on it though. That's what prompted me to start doing all, you know, this valve cover because I figured it was that EGR valve starting to act up. Uh, you guys that don't have a fancy flasher or even one of the cheap ones, an old trick to reset your computer is just unhook your negative, unhook your positive uh, off of the battery now. Hold them both in your hand, just touch them together for about 10 seconds. And that'll just flash the codes and everything off. It won't hurt anything. Don't touch it you know positive to negative with it on the battery take it off take the uh positive off if you need a short jumper wire or whatever to get them to touch that'll just reset your codes quick instead of unhooking the battery waiting 10 minutes hooking it back up but anyway i'm gonna clean this up put it back together and we'll see you guys in the next video all right so i got the uh the crews all back together Got the, uh, you know, did the negative terminal or negative wire, positive wire deal I told you about. Reset my, flash my computer. Check engine light's gone. It's purring like a kitten. Uh, I'm sure a lot of your owners know or have been asked, you know, that these cruise motors sound like a little diesel motor. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's perfectly normal. They have hydraulic lifters in them and they're just historically noisy. So it's not bad lifters. It's not, you know, it's, cams need to be, or uh, push rods or valves need to be shimmed, none of that stuff. It's, it's hydraulic lifters. This car has done that since day one. Uh, a lot of people don't really notice it until they got the hood open, jump start in somebody's car. Or, you know, that's when they notice it. It's got a little, well, it sounds like a knock, but it's not. Um, yeah, so I mean, sometimes the frustrating part is, is, you know, my rough idle, I figured maybe it was this a vacuum issue found that <coughs> excuse me found that bad uh corroded up spark plug coil uh could have been either or could have been a little of both 
but when it all boils down to it, if it costs you a couple extra dollars more than maybe it could have, but the thing's running good, that's what really matters. I mean, maybe all it was is that, and judging by the condition of that one coil on the cylinder run, uh, odds are that was the problem the whole time, you know, just intermittent fire. But, like I said, 111,000 miles I looked, that's the actual miles on this car, so the valve cover on this thing was due. Same thing, I recommend you guys do it too. Alright, and uh, we got it through another one. Take care. Quick deal. Uh, we had mentioned earlier about this diaphragm. So out of my own, out of my own curiosity, I figured I'd pop this open and see what's going on. So this is what we're talking about here. Here's my flashlight. And you can see this one here, I think, I think I did that with the chisel. But this one here, that low one, that wasn't me, that was there. So yeah, this diaphragm has failed. Um, I wasn't getting, you'll see, I'm sure if you look at other videos, you'll see where if you plug that little hole with your thumb, you'll hear the sucking sound. But I wasn't getting that, and it was because it was plugged full of shit. So, even though I wasn't getting that issue, I still had, and you can just see the gunk and stuff in there. It's just a piss poor design, you know, along with a lot of the other designs on this car. But anyway... I'm going to end the video so you can get on and uh, do your little project. Feel free to leave comments, suggestions, uh, part numbers. I, I'm pretty bad at keeping track of part numbers, but like I said, if you go to Rock Auto. Go to Rock Auto, use their, uh, they have probably one of the best search platforms I've ever seen on a, any website. And it, like I said, it's accurate. Them guys have done their homework. Whoever they source uh, the uh, actual shipping and stocking and whatnot from, that is, you know, they, they do a great job. So, all right, I'm going to get off of here and go get some dinner. Take care. Bye.